Hello and welcome to this month's painting tutorial. This month I'm going to show you how to paint a landscape with some small figures in it. So let's begin by sketching that out. I'm going to begin by placing the horizon line. So I'm going to place this line and it's in the lower third of the painting. So this is about the lower third of my painting here. Then if I eyeball the center vertical, that's about where the first figure is going to line up about here and the second figure is going to be about here right behind him. Then the top of these trees, this whole shape here, I'm going to place that about right here. And then I have this large dark shape that goes clear to the top of the page. And there's a second fairly dark shape here in the background. This comes down and then I have this bracken and broken up twigs and such in the foreground. Trail with some rocks on it right here. Trail goes off the paper here and like this. And then when everything is really loose like that, I'll go back and I'll draw these figures a little bit more accurately. And I like to draw my figures from the head down. And I can use the first figure to sh tell me about where the shoulders should line up. So straight line across and those shoulders on the second figure line up with this bar on the backpack. Now I can clean up my messy lines, but I don't want to box myself in too much. I just want an impression of where things are so I don't get lost as I start to paint, but I don't want everything to be established already. I do, however, need to take some time next and use my masking fluid to put in some of these highlights. So I'm going to use a masking pen. I'm not even going to draw the leaves first. I'm just going to start to scratch them in, drying them with a tip, just like this. Now if you don't want to mask every individual leaf like that, make a puddle of masking fluid like this, and then dip a toothbrush or a nylon brush in it and flick it over the paper. It's a lot faster and it can really lend itself well to realistic foliage. You're going to get different effects if you spatter or if you sprinkle. When I sprinkle, I kind of fling the brush like this and that gives me larger droplets. So I'll take a little time now and finish masking in some of these highlights and then we'll come back when it's dry and start painting. Now the masking fluid is dry and we're ready to start sprinkling in these different greens. So the first step when you're watercolor painting is to map out in your mind how you're going to go about finishing everything. I've protected the figures with masking fluid so I don't need to worry about painting around them. I've protected my whites and now I know that I need to work from back to front. In the background I have some much much darker greens than the foreground greens and yellows that I see here. And then this trail is kept really light. So working from back to front means I need to do that background first and not cover everything with the darks, otherwise I'm going to lose these interesting contrasts. So let's begin with a large brush. This is a number 38 Golden Fleece Giant. I'm also going to work with some syringes here. With a brush I can sort of blot in the colors like this and then mix it up by sprinkling in some different blues, but it's always going to look a little bit brushy. With the syringe I can suck up some yellow and then suck up some blue, mix the color up in the syringe itself, and then sprinkle it on like I would have to with a brush, but I'm staying close and I'm maintaining more control over the medium. So here's some more green, sprinkling around here. I'm trying to stay around the outside right now so that the interior in here stays fairly light. Now let me show you how you can sprinkle on by tapping in some color like this. And I'll sprinkle in some bright yellows. And when you're doing foliage, it's a good idea to try to stay away from brushing the color on as much as possible. Counterintuitive though that sounds. After putting down some color, spritz your page with some water and that'll get the color moving in a more interesting fashion than if you had tried to brush on the texture with a brush. I'll put in some more darks. It really doesn't matter what you use for darks. Purple works well, indigo, some dark greens. 
But the point is that you let those colors mix right on your page. Don't worry about being messy. This is not the fussy stage yet. This is the get the color on the page stage. Then you can actually pick up the paper and start to move it around to help those colors move as well. If you're getting some really wet areas, use a syringe, suck up the color again, and spray it somewhere else. Let's get some darks in here, some really dark darks. You're really letting the watercolor paint itself in this stage more than anything else. I want some more yellows in here. And don't cover everything. Light is your friend, and the only way you're going to get pure lights in watercolor painting is by leaving the paper white or protecting it before you start. Then after you've gotten enough color on the page, it's time to let that dry. So let's go ahead and let this dry, and we'll come back to it and see what it looks like. Okay, this is the painting after that first coat of really exciting stuff here has dried. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the masking fluid off. The easiest way to do it is with a rubber cement eraser. Then I'm going to add some of these branches. I'm getting my large round wet again. I'm getting some nice blues and purples, dark browns on the brush. Then I'm going to carefully create the tree branches. Now even when you're doing the tree branches, keep in mind that it's going to be most effective if you don't just rely on one color, but allow several to mix on the page. And I'm also gonna have a smaller round ready and wet so that I can drag some lines through, either with the brush bristles or even with the handle, and drag some branches and do similar work in the background farther behind. Just let your brush skip over the page a little bit so that it's not a solid line but looks like something that might be growing organically in nature. So nothing too straight, nothing too regular. I'm going to have these branches be different thicknesses as well. You don't want any symmetry in your paintings. Symmetry creates competition, and you don't want that. So then I'm doing the same thing, creating some twigs off these branches. And on the other side, I'm going to indicate just a few more. This here, that's the lighter color, is actually a grove of aspen trees. So I'll do this the same way as those other trees, only with a different color. And then with the brush handle, Again, I'm going to drag through a few branches the same way. On the path, I'm going to add a purpley shadow color. Keep it broken uh, so that it will look like the shadow cast on the trail by leaves and sticks. I'll also add some shadow to this rock while I'm at it. And then down here, I'm going to add some darks around these branches. Now I'm going to use a smaller brush and add some of those finer twig shapes. Now also, these highlights aren't looking like leaves right now. They need to be a little bit better defined. So I'm going to mix up some green. And I'm going to go around and selectively strengthen the background color around a few of these leaves. So I'm just going to do just enough that some of these shapes pop out. You don't want to cover up all your whites, be very careful. But I'm going to take a little time off camera and do this work in these leaves, and then I'm going to come back to you and we'll push it forward. After bringing out some more of these leaf shapes and strengthening some of the aspen tree branches, I'm going to lay in some more color in the path. I'm going to keep it pretty weak because I still want this to look like a light struck path and then I'll just lay it in with a brush on the side like this so that I still maintain some texture. Then, while that's drying, I'll go in back into the background and I'm gonna pick out some white. I'm using a small angled flat, get any damp, and then I'll scrape through that paint. Even though it's dry, it's so fresh that it's gonna come up fairly easily. And I can just bring out a highlight edge on some of those branches 
You can do the same thing if you want to bring out some little leaf shapes. Then you just make a circular motion like this and blot that. Right back here, I want this to be more yellow because if it's bright highlights, that will keep these from looking as bright in the foreground where I need them to be really bright because this is where the direct light is hitting. So everything that's not being hit by direct light can't be bright white or I'm going to lose my realism. You can also actually use yellow paint and paint that on there if I want. And I'll do the same thing back here and get rid of those bright white targets. Now at the top of the trail I want to add a little bit more green. So I'll just blot in some texture like this. And I can add some green around the base of these trees here. But then in front of the rocks, it's supposed to be fairly bright, so I'll do the same thing where I rub and blot. Rub with a wet brush and blot it out. Now here in the foreground on the path, that's pretty dry now. So I can use a small round and I can either paint in some small delicate shadows just by connecting some of the dots that got away from me when I was flinging earlier. Or I can fling on some more dots just like this and that will give me some nice dirt. Also in the foreground I'm going to add some little grass blades. I'm using a rigger brush and just start at the bottom and fling up with one little motion. Make sure that you keep these delicate details in the foreground. You wouldn't be able to see them back here realistically. So you want a variation. You want some loose, frantic, excited, energetic patches. And then you can take your time and develop some details where you would logically see them in the foreground, in the characters. Uh, bring out a sharp edge here and there and lose the rest of your edges so that you have a give and take, a push and pull of soft and hard, contrast and low contrast, brights and darks, all going on in the same piece. Okay, now when that's dry, I'm going to take the masking fluid off the people. But then once you start, use the largest area that you can for the little figures. I'll add the legs and the arms. That won't take long to dry. And then I can go back and start adding the colors of the clothing. Now a lot of times people aren't wearing what you would want them to wear. They might be wearing green shirts. So don't be afraid to change that up. In this case they're both wearing blue shirts and that's a little bit boring. So I'm going to make one bright turquoise and then the other figure will be wearing red. And you can see how quickly I'm putting these in. I'm intentionally trying to keep my strokes nice and loose. I want it to be correct, but I don't want to spend tons and tons of time on these figures because then the risk is that I'll overwork them and add more detail than you would realistically be able to see. So again, you just want the impression. So I'm going to take a little bit of time off camera, bring out a few more of those highlights using that rub and blot method, maybe sharpen up a few details here and there, and then I'll come back one last time to show you how the finished painting turned out. Here's the finished painting. There's the top and the bottom. So really, at this stage, you can see that after that first really loose, exciting step, half the painting was done. And now the finished piece has a nice contrast between high detail work and some really nice loose stuff in the background there. So it turned out to be a nice piece, and I think you're going to enjoy painting this one at home. I'll upload the reference material for you so you can try your hand at doing a nice, really loose and fun initial wash with lots of color. And just don't forget to protect your whites and protect those figures so that you can tighten up the details in those areas without too much hassle after that energetic background is dried. So that concludes this month's painting tutorial. I hope you've learned some techniques so you can take back to your own studio. And as usual, I thank you so much for watching.